الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلامنا على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الانبياء وعلى اله الاسكياء واصحابه الاتقياء اما بعد earlier in the talk Sheikh Abdul Nasser was speaking about the confidence and the resolve of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I'm assuming maybe one of the reasons why Sheikh Abdul Nasser brought this up is because in our community, this is a trait that is almost absent among young folks. There's no certainty, there's no direction. Earlier today, I went to my kids' Tahfidh uh, al-Qur'an Madrasa, where they go to memorize the Qur'an. And the Shaykh asked me to share a few words with the students. They're all young kids, 10 years old or something like this. And uh, I shared something with them that I... I've shared a few times today, and since my kids have been with me all day, they've been, heard, they've been hearing me say this. But why not share it again? Because I think there might be khayr in it. Um, I explained to these kids that there is a, a difference between being young, being a child, and being an adult. When a child is still young, before they reach adulthood, they live a life where everyone does everything for them. When it's salah time, someone has to come and tell them it's salah time. When it's food time, the parents will shout, it's time for a meal, so they'll come down for food. The parents will have to remind them, did you take a shower this week? So go, take a shower. Did you cut your nails? Okay, go cut your nails. Did you apply some fragrance? Okay, apply some fragrance. Um, someone has to wake the child up in the morning. The child generally won't wake up on its own. Similarly, after the child wakes up, the parents have to remind the child, did you brush your teeth today? And then after that, when it comes time for food, someone has to prepare the food. When it comes time to put their clothes on, someone has to wash those clothes and prepare them. Someone has to take them to the school or madrasa, and so on. There are people around them that keep them on track and take care of them. A part of adulthood is relieving all of those people and taking your own responsibility for everything. Where now no one is responsible of waking you up anymore. No one's responsible of washing your clothes and ironing them, that's on you. If you are 20 years old and your mother is still ironing your clothes, it's a shame. You should be doing that by now on your own. You should have the skill set and the ability to prepare food for yourself if you're a 20-year-old young man, even though your mother may choose to cook for you. This is a part of maturity. It's a part of growing up that you learn to let go of all of those people that are pushing you, all those people that are guiding you. The downside to having people continuously providing for you is that it's easy to take them for granted. And when someone takes something for granted, they become entitled to it. So I'll notice with my kids that when they'll come back from madrasa, because their mom packs the lunch for them, they'll say, Mama, you didn't put enough jam, or you didn't put enough peanut butter, or you gave him this sandwich, you didn't give me this sandwich. A lot of complaints. Because they feel that that's their right. They've forgotten to realize that this meal that was prepared for them and packed for them was purely the, out of kindness of their mother. Are you guys following what I'm saying here? So now we have a whole generation of young men and women, but since I'm talking to young guys, why not, right? Who haven't taken control of their own lives and taken on the responsibilities that are due on them. They're waiting for someone else to come and take care of their needs. Someone else will come and motivate me to come to the masjid. Someone else will teach me and guide me the harms of, you know, uh, being intoxicated or being high. Someone else will motivate me that I should go and do my homework. Someone else will come and teach me how to be a good friend or a good son. We're waiting for other people to do everything without realizing that that onus now that we are adults lies on who? It lies on us. It lies on us. And if a person doesn't, then they are accountable with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You don't get to blame other people. Yes, when a young man comes and says that I've, you know, someone comes and says I had a friend that left Islam. So there's obviously a part of internal reflection that that sucks. What could the Muslim community have done to, you know, do better with retaining the iman of younger folks? But then there's a second side of the story, which is that that was all on you. I didn't tell you to become kafir. Did anyone in the masjid tell you to leave Islam? Did anyone promote kufr in your life? So all the kufri influences that existed, minus maybe the last push, were all you're doing. So you don't get to stick that, 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 that sticky pad on my forehead and walk away that I'm the cause of your kufr. Every person is accountable of their own doings. 
And this is Quranic, this is as Quranic as it gets. وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وَزْرَ أُخْرَى Now, I'm going to close with a hadith of Sahih Muslim, narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu an. It's a very concise narration that it's packed with so much wisdom and guidance. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, الْمُؤْمِنُ الْقَوِي خَيْرٌ وَأَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِ الضَّعِيفِ that a strong believer is superior and more beloved to Allah than a weak believer. And the reason is because strength is a result of perseverance. A weak person has to endure and go through a difficulty, continue to persevere for strength to exist. Is that right, guys? You have to continue to persevere. You have to grow. Work on that skill and, and not give up and keep pushing yourself to be a better version of yourself. That's how you become superior and you become stronger. However, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then continues and says, وَفِي كُلٍ خَيْرٍ However, in both groups, whether someone is weak or strong, there is good in them, there is potential in them, because again, the hadith identified both as mu'min, al-mu'minu al-qawi, wal-mu'minu al-da'if, that both of them are believers, so there is potential in both of them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues in the hadith and he says, اِحْرِسْ عَلَى مَا يَنْفَعُكَ وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْجَزْ Three things. Number one, اِحْرِسْ عَلَى مَا يَنْفَعُكَ Figure out what in life benefits you. Stop waiting for people to come for you. No one needs to invite you to the masjid. If you believe in Allah and you believe in standing before Allah, that needs to become a priority on your list. If you understand that you have a body and that body has a right on you and you need to stay healthy, no one needs to come and tell you to go do some cardio and cut back on the donuts and go and work out. You got to do all that yourself. Figure out what benefits you. The Muslim perspective though is that when you figure out what, when you're looking for what benefits you, you don't only look at the worldly impact, rather you look at the ukhrawi impact too. That how does this play off in the long run? How does this friendship or how does this relationship, how does this interaction impact the day that I stand in front of Allah and there is no veil between myself and Allah, it's just a moment of intimacy between you and your Lord. Ihris ala ma yanfaq, figure out what benefits you. Be wise, be intelligent, be observant. Vigilant. What benefits me? Wasta'in billah. And then when you take that path, ask Allah to help you. Because the human being can only go so far on their own. At the end of the day, we all need tawfiq and divine guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala ta'ajaz. And when you're on the path, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't walk out. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَإِنْ أَصَابَكَ شَيْءٌ فَلَا تَقُلْ لو أني فعلت كان كذا وكذا ولكن قل قدر الله وما شاء فعل فإن لو تفتح عمل الشيطان رواه مسلم. نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم says enough on the path once you've committed to something if something happens that you weren't expecting for example let's start the whole let's follow the scenario right you were looking for something that benefits you as a young person you've realized that marriage is something that's going to benefit me otherwise I'm putting myself at too much risk spiritually and otherwise. I need someone to confine, I need a companion in life, so I know this is good for me. Wasta'in billah, you ask Allah for help. Wala ta'ajaz, you don't give up, you keep looking for a good companion, and you find a companion. Now what's very much possible is that after you get married to that person, the marriage may not work out. And it's at moments like that, that people begin to question themselves, and they lose confidence in themselves. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that along the way, if something happens that's very different from what you had originally planned, don't lose hope in yourself. Don't say, لو أني فعلت كان كذا وكذا, that if I had done this instead of that, that would have been the outcome. Where you start playing the if game. وَلَكِنْ قُلْ Rather say, قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعَلْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined whatever He willed came true. That's what manifested. Right? I can only try in my life and never be shy of trying. فَإِنَّ لَوْ تَفْتَهُ عَمَلَ الشَّيْطَانِ Because saying if opens the doors to shaitan. And that's all that I have to say for today. If I can summarize what I shared with you, take responsibility for yourself. If you believe that you can do with improvement, you have to hold yourself accountable. Change won't come until you desire change, until you walk towards change. It's very easy for human beings to hide within the shade of other human beings and kind of just go under the radar. But it takes great courage to shut off all the noise and stand in front of the mirror and have a true, critical, analytical, deep look into your own heart and say, this is where change needs to happen. This is where I need to work. Because at the end of the day, every person sitting here, I don't know when it might hit you or if it's already hit you or not, every person here, including myself, 
we will stand before our Lord on our own and no one's going to be there. So there really isn't any benefit in hiding, else, hiding out in someone else's shade. You're going to have to take control of yourself. And change happens best when you initiate it, when you desire it, when you seek it. That's when change happens. I'll finish with one last statement. Rasulullah refers to a heart covered in darkness. There's one famous hadith in Kitab al Fitan al Mishkat where Nabi Sallallahu talks about there are two types of hearts. There are those hearts that repel fitna, and then there are those that accept fitna. Like when shaitan whispers to them, there are those that openly fight against it. And every time they openly fight against it, Allah blesses that, that, um, that heart with nur, with light. And as a result of that nur, مثل uh, قلبه كمثل الصفا Nabi Sallallahu says that person's heart becomes like Safa. Safa refers to a shiny and very slippery surface, a stone, kind of like um, uh, what's the counter? Uh, marble, yeah, marble, like marble. You know why they use marble in countertops is because if something falls on there, what do they do, guys? It's one swoop and it's clean again. That's how that person's heart becomes that no fitna sticks, no fitna clings, it just goes off. And then Nabi Sallallahu talks about the other person whose heart is susceptible to fitna and opened up. Their heart becomes very dark and ashy. Right? And then at the end of it, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam compares that heart to مَثَلُ قَلْبِهِ كَمَثَلِ الْكُوزِ مُجْخِيًّا or مُجَخِيًّا Both readings of it. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talks about their heart being like a kuz, a container, which is flipped upside down. When you have a person's heart that's flipped upside down, and you try to pour water into it, what's going to happen to that water, folks? That's the problem. Everyone comes and says that, you know, oh, I have so-and-so friend that's on drugs, or he's got a bad problem, or he's disrespectful, he's abusive. How do I fix him? And the truth is, you can't fix them, unless they want to be fixed. If they don't want it, you can't do anything. Their example is like a container that's upside down. All you can do is keep nudging them and ask them, man, turn the container over. Turn it open, man. Open it up. Let us pour something in there. But if they don't want it, like I was talking about the atheist example earlier on, then there's nothing that could be done. And that's why many ulama, they say that kufr in reality is uh, a result of an enormous amount of kibr. That it's a lot of pride that builds up and it builds up and it builds up. And hence, it's one of the ummahat, right? one of the, 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 the source sins that we must, be, that must, that we must avoid. Khair may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. It was a pleasure being here. I'm really happy to see all the folks from all over the state and outside of the state. Um, hopefully we all benefit from Sheikh Abdul Nasser's uh, session and our dear uh, beloved uh, Imam and Ustad Murad and the others that have put this together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this in places in your mizan hasanat. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya وسلموا تسليما إن الذين يؤذون الله ورسوله لعنهم الله في الدنيا والآخرة وأعد لهم عذابا مهينا والذين يؤذون المؤمنين والمؤمنات بغير ما اكتسبوا فقد احتملوا بهتانا وإثما مبينا